Today shows a review of the Linear Tube Audio Mic Risotto Preamplifier and also the Linear Tube Audio Ultra Linear Plus Power Amplifier. Yes, it is. And it was a long and winding road getting to the point that I was going to actually do this review and make a video. Because, well, here's the backstory. About a year ago, <laughs> I reviewed the Linear Tube Audio Z40 Plus Integrated Amp and I absolutely loved it. And I said, you don't want to do a follow-up, I want to do reviews of, of your separates, of a pre-amplifier and a power amplifier. And they said, sure, no problem. So they sent over the Microsoft Pre and the Ultra Linear Plus, and they've been here a long time. And I've been using them, especially, especially the Microsoft Preamp, in my main reference system. And I, I realized I was using and relying on my past lab's XP30 preamp less and less. And I really didn't see that coming. I wasn't looking for a new reference. But as I continued over this, this year of listening sessions, I said, you know, I think this is it. I think the Microsoft Pre is the one. So I have a feeling a bunch of you guys haven't actually seen the Z40 review. So I will just briefly reintroduce Linear Tube Audio. Uh, they're an American company. They design and build their products in Tacoma Park, Maryland. The Microsoto Pre is a Class A, no feedback design. <laughs> and oh, I got to say right up front, by the way, the knob feel and the build quality uh, of this preamplifier is extraordinary. First of all, when you when you touch the, the, the buttons, by the way, are all touch sensitive brass buttons, and the volume control knob feel is among the best ever. It's very, very smooth. And when you turn it, you're turning a stepped attenuator, a hundred step attenuator that uses Vichy resistors, really first class. And it makes these clicking sounds as you go between the, the steps. There is a, a left-right balance control, but it's not a knob per se. It's, it's in uh, the setup menu. And there's this cute little all metal remote that's how you access left-right balance. Hey, let's take a peek at the back panel and you will see that my review sample has four sets of RCA inputs, line level inputs, one set of XLR inputs, a tape input, and also a tape monitor jack, plus two uh, preamplifier outputs, one you could use to drive a power amplifier, obviously, and the second one, maybe for a powered subwoofer or two. This is an all analog preamplifier, meaning there's no built-in DAC or digital connectivity whatsoever. Oh, and by the way, there's a headphone amp built in to the Microsoft preamplifier, and it is, mm, I would say, the best I've ever heard inside a stereo preamplifier. As, in other words, not a freestanding headphone amplifier. First class, I'm gonna talk about the headphone sound later on in this review. Now, the warranty runs to three years. Now, I, do, I know on the website it actually says two years, but in fact, I double-checked and triple-checked. Yes, it's a three-year warranty. Uh, LTA sells direct worldwide, though they do have a handful of brick-and-mortar dealers in the United States and around the world, and I will link to their website page that lists all the brick-and-mortar dealers in case you get lucky, and there's one near you. But in any case, when you buy direct, you have a 14-day return policy. Oh, the warranty runs to three years, but there's also a one-year warranty on the tubes. That's special right there, because usually tube electronics, they, the warranty for the tubes usually is more like 90 days. And one of the reasons they do that, other than just being nice people, is that Tubes in linear tube audio products are designed to last a really long time. They run them in such a way as, is that they expect that in the power amplifier, you will get 10 to 20,000 hours of use. And, and same for the, for the preamplifier. That's an extraordinarily long uh, lifespan for tubes because they run them gently. <laughs> Let's just say gently. I, I'll show you some pictures of the inside of this preamplifier and note that the price starts at $4,450. Let's move on to the power amplifier, the Ultra Linear Plus power amplifier. Now, you look inside this beast, and what you don't see, it's, two, it's a tube amplifier, 
But what you don't see are output transformers, which pretty much almost every tube amplifier has is these big honking, very expensive output transformers. Inside this one, no output transformers. And linear tube audio uses circuitry designed by David Burning, and what he calls the circuit is Zotal, zero output transformerless. And rather than me try to explain how that works, I'm just gonna link to the LTA website and you can read in detail what's going on with Zotal. So this is a 20 watt per channel class AB push-pull design. There's no specific uh, power rating relative to impedance. It's 20 watts per channel for eight ohms and 20 watts per channel for four ohms. Let's take a look inside the power amplifier and make note that those power tubes, those big tubes, are not typical tubes. Those are 17 JN6 power tubes. They're actually were designed for use in televisions, in tube televisions. But that's the tube that David Burning absolutely favors. Oh, and then for the smaller tubes, by the way, are, there's two of them, two 12AU7 and also two 12AX7. By the way, it has a switching power supply, so there's no gigantic power transformer. But this power supply is a very advanced design, designed by uh, David Burning, which he favors for use in power amplifiers over linear power supply. So without a power transformer and also output transformers, this is a rather lightweight design. It weighs 17 pounds, which is I appreciate because it's really easy to move around. And again, the life expectancy, the lifespan for the tubes is rated to be between 10 and 20,000 hours. That is extraordinary. And I don't want to forget the price. Yes, the price with the Ultra Linear Plus is $6,800. Sold factory direct and, like I said, with a sprinkling of brick and mortar dealers in the U.S. and worldwide. Yes, these are expensive components. but when you step back and realize that these are handmade pieces of electronics. Uh, there's a man who works for Linear Tube Audio, one of the workers there, Karen, he personally, just him, he builds each microzotal preamp. And it takes between 24 and 32 hours to build just one. He builds them one at a time, not groups of them at a time. Just one preamp requires between 24 and 32 hours of labor by Karen. <laughs> yeah, and then it's and then each uh, preamplifier is run in for a solid week, playing music and then tested again to make sure everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. And another gentleman at the factory, Santa, he also he builds the Ultra Linear Plus power amplifier again, requiring between 24 and 32 hours to build just one amplifier. Yes, and then the full week of burning and then testing. All of that takes time, and yeah, so they are expensive, but I think when you look at the complexity of the build, <laughs> there's a lot going on. It's no, it's no wonder that it takes that long to build each piece. And there is a waiting list, but no worries here, it's not nearly as long as some other American tube electronics waiting lists for their customers. No, the waiting list for linear tube audio customers is between four and six weeks, but there are times where they actually have built up some inventory, in which case the, the waiting time is basically zero. The, the rest of the system consisted of uh, my reference speakers, the Pure Audio Project Duet 15, the uh, Mola Mola Tabaki DAC, Jay's Audio uh, CD Transport, the Technique's uh, SL1200G turntable with a variety of cartridges. Phono preamp was the Parasound JC3+. Plus. The sound of these electronics, though they are tube electronics, is not particularly tubey. It's not solid state sounding, but it doesn't sound like other tube amplifiers because of the lack of output transformers, which is part of the signature sound of most tube power amplifiers. So there's that. I think the sound is very clean, very clear, great imaging, very big, spacious sound stages coming out of the Pure Audio Project speakers. First recording I want to talk about, <laughs> it had to be this one. And this is probably my favorite Rolling Stones album of all time, Beggar's Banquet. I think they're at their absolute peak. Now, 
if you watch my videos, you know that I do not just select recordings that are, quote, audiophile or great sounding. I do, but not exclusively, right? I choose recordings that I like the music, and I love this album. And every time I sit down to play it, I'm amazed how my passion for this record never diminishes over time. And the track, Street Fighting Man, is just so raw and so of its time. The political upheavals that we were going through in 1968, 1969, you just feel it just slamming out of the speakers. It's incredible. And the guitars have this, this distortion that just feels so good and it's so deep. You could just go deeper and deeper and just listening into that wall of sound. And Charlie Watts's drumming is just superhuman. It's just like the perfect rock drumming, again, for me. Bill Wyman's bass playing you know, talk about underrated. Man, this guy's bass lines for the Stones for the first 30 or so years he was in the band. Um, the be Just the best. Underrated by far. But anyway, I love him. I love everything about it. And of course, Mick is just wailing away. And it's just goosebump territory from beginning to end. And the acoustic tracks like, like Factory Girl, wow. It's just so, you, you feel the textures in the music. And you know, <laughs> and then Salt of the Earth is epic. It's just extraordinary. And the Linear Tube Audio products were just unleashing that sound and making it real and making it vital. I wanted to squeeze in some time listening to headphones. And as I alluded to earlier, this built-in headphone amplifier is extraordinary. The best I've ever heard in a preamplifier. Now for separate headphone amplifiers, yeah, there's lots of really good ones out there, but I'm talking about a built-in headphone amplifier for anybody who really, you know, have, has a serious set of headphones. Anyway, so I'm listening to the Modern Jazz Quartet with Audizy Planner Magnetic Headphones. <laughs> and it does that thing where, wait, is the sound still coming out of the speakers? Because it sounds so big that I'm inside the sound. It's almost like a sound bath because it's so big and spacious sounding. And I can feel, I can feel Percy Heath's fingers on the bass and the drums and the cymbals, the purity and the clarity. And the other thing is, these are early, you know, these are not contemporary recordings. These are from the 50s and 60s and 70s. So each musician isn't locked away in a separate booth. These musicians are all in a studio where they can see and hear each other. And when you listen over a great set of headphones, it's like, you are there, you are with them. If you close your eyes, you say, yeah, I'm in that space with the band. So yes, I'm definitely super impressed with the headphone sound, but I do understand that that's not a, you know, an important quality for most, most people looking at preamplifiers. But if you are there and you are headphone curious, this would be the one to check out. To do my first amplifier comparison, uh, it was between the first watt F7, Class A, uh, designed by Nelson Pass, and the Ultra Linear Plus. Both amplifiers were dri being driven by the Microsoft. And I'm playing the Rolling Stones Sticky Fingers. Yeah, I'm still stuck in the Rolling Stones groove. And I'm playing Sticky Fingers. And I'm, the last track, Moonlight Mile, the strings. Now, strings on the Rolling Stones, the record doesn't sound like a great idea. But in this case, it absolutely works because it adds some musical depth and just it just works, it just absolutely works. And with the F7, strangely, the F sounded more like a, quote, tube amplifier than the ultra linear did, because it was softer and rounder and just kind of luscious and juicy and warm. And the ultra linear was, was so much clearer in its delineation of each instrument, of the spaces between the instrument and the bass definition was way better on the ultra linear than it was on the F7. So comparing the Ultra Linear Plus power amplifier to the first Watt F7, similar power ratings, one solid state, one's tube, output transformless tube, but the difference in bass definition and clarity down there was much superior coming out of the Ultra Linear compared to the F7. And I want to repeat myself too many times, but I didn't see that coming because you sort of always assume that the solid state amplifier is gonna have greater control over the woofers. In this case, these 15 inch Pure Audio Project woofers. 
but in fact the ultra linear plus did have exert greater grip on the movements of those big old woofers. Moody Blues have been uh, one of my guilty pleasure bands. I just like them. I know it's not hip to like them and stuff, but I don't know. I just have a soft spot in my heart for the Moody's and I just pick this, just grab this best of collection and I'm playing it thinking, yeah, man, those arrangements are so intricate and so soaring and so hippie-ish and psychedelic and all that stuff. It was really good. I'm having a good time. But and then I'm thinking, you know, wait, wait, I have a Mobile Fidelity LP of On the Threshold to a Dream. Let me pop that on. So I go from this best of, which was of questionable mastering, and I go to this one and it's like, whoa, <laughs> it's suddenly everything just pops into focus. The soundstage just blossomed. The bass was deeper and tighter and clearer. And I'm thinking, I'm listening to a two preamp and a two power amp. And there's no softening here. I could so easily hear the difference between an eh mastering and an excellent one. It just, it was, it was all there. It was all present and very much accounted for. So to continue, I wanted to do a comparison between the Pass Labs XA25 Class A amplifier and the Ultralinear Plus. And I'm playing this file of Bruce Springsteen's Songs of introspection. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and I'm playing Saint in the City. And it's one of those wow moments. Like Bruce is definitely such a powerhouse. I saw him early on a bunch of times and he was such a, like a commanding presence on stage. And that's what I was getting from this recording. And I was having a good time. And, the, and this is with the XA25 first. And I'm listening to it thinking, Yes, the XA25 is giving its all to me. Absolutely. It's why it's been <laughs> my long-term reference for so long. At least five years, my reference solid state amplifier. So then I switch over to the ultra linear. And yes, there was things about the XA25 that was definitely better. But there was something more blood and guts coming through uh, the ultra linear plus that I didn't quite hear with the XA25. The XA25 was very powerful sound. You felt the Bruce Springsteen presence. I know it's hard to distinguish here, but anyway, I just felt more soul. I felt more of what the songs were about with the Ultralinear Plus. The Ultralinear Plus was not as dynamically punchy and powerful sounding. But again, this is with the Pure Audio Project do at 15 speakers. So it was, a, it was a close contest, but in terms of Feeling it, feeling the music, I give the nod to the Ultra Linear Plus. Uh, the other thing I can say is that the Ultra Linear Plus's uh, imaging is more 3D and expansive, and the XA25 is more, it sounds smaller, maybe sharper focus, but definitely not as open and relaxed sounding in that sense. As for comparisons between the Pass Labs XP30 and the Microsoft Preamplifier. As I said right up front, the XP30 is my long-term reference. It is very neutral, very clear, very well-ordered preamplifier. But when I switched, oh, every time I switched over to the Microsoft preamp, I felt, I literally felt more relaxed. That is the best description. They're both really, really good. The uh, XP30, has superior transient detail and clarity, more edge definition to use that word. It does all those things really, really well. You could call it like a textbook uh, wish list of what you want a solid state preamplifier to be. But <laughs> I just relax more. I enjoyed music more again and again and again with the microzotal. The top end of the Ultra Linear Plus and the Microsoft preamplifier is easy. It's very clear, but it isn't in your face. It doesn't hit you over the head with like, look at all that sparkle, look at all, no, it doesn't do that. It's more reserved than that, but it certainly is. It's not dull, it's not soft. No, I find it a very musical balance in the top end. So let's get to, so Steve, what do you really think of the linear tube audio Microsoft preamplifier and the Ultra Linear Plus power amplifier. Well, <laughs> this is a slightly different perspective than I usually give, but 
I lived with these products for a really long time and I kept postponing doing this review because I didn't want it to end. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just kept going and going and going, pushing off into the future. And now the time has come today for, to give you my summation. I love them both. I think if you're looking for a preamp uh, in this price range, $44.50, this should be at the top of your list. Power Amp, the Ultra Linear Plus, is a little tougher because it is, yeah, only 20 watts per channel. And that might not be enough for less than sensitive speakers or for people who like to play music really loud, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not, it's not as universal a recommend. But these are expensive products. And circling back to where this all started, it might make more sense for most people, instead of buying these two together, but to buy an integrated amplifier from Linear 2 Audio, like the one I reviewed a year ago, the Z40 Plus, which is $7,650, which is substantially less than these two. So I would actually direct you to, if I piqued your interest here, go back and look at that review. Because what you'll find is that that integrated does a lot of what these two do together. These are better, and I enjoy the flexibility, but the Z40 Plus <laughs> is phenomenal. That's how it makes sense to me that unless you need a separate preamp and power amp, you're probably better off to buy the LTA integrated amp. And they offer a few different models. My experience was with the Z40 Plus. Okay, so let's do it. Let's move on to the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. Bert says he lives alone in Mississippi, so he can play his music as loud as he likes. And as for the system itself, there's a Yamaha AS2200. The turntable is a Riga Planer 6 with an Ania moving coil cartridge, which goes into an EAT Eglo Petite phono stage. Then for streaming title, he's using an Allo Digi One signature with a linear power supply and that runs into a Denifreps Ares II DAC. And the balance outputs run into the Yamaha. As for the speakers, oh yeah, you know them, you love them. Klipsch Heresy 3s with a Klipsch subwoofer. He is a happy camper. Thank you, Bert. <laughs> okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg. I am the Audiophiliac. If you dig the channel, if you enjoy these kind of in-depth reviews and Audiophiliac viewer systems of the day and chats with Herb and other people, um, please consider supporting this channel by joining my Patreon. Super easy to do. Address is, yes, on the screen right now. You can join for a couple of bucks, up to $50 or $100 a month. People in the top two tiers, you and I have a conversation every month at the beginning of the month. Uh, but hey, if you can chip in a couple of bucks, it is much appreciated. Uh, and if you like a given video, please remember to hit that like button, super important, and subscribe if you have yet to do so. And with that, I can say my work here is 100% complete. Thank you again for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.